father and son team made the top fuel field for the first time in history, each driving their own car. 20-year-old Scott Kalita was the number 16 qualifier, his dad, Connie, number 11. Scott's competition in the first round, Billy Williams. Kalita fell behind at the start, with Williams having a big lead as he crossed the finish line, then disaster. A giant engine explosion, Williams fighting to keep control of the car at over 250 miles an hour. The huge tires acting like giant rubber balls as Williams attempted to bring the bouncing dragster to a safe halt. Okay, Dave, as you can see, an engine explosion, burning the parachute up a Billy Williams car, burning it up enough where it was ineffective. But Williams is all right, did a masterful job of driving this car. He really did. He avoided the net down here, which uh, some say you shouldn't do. But Billy had it slowed down enough. You're OK, Billy? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, what happened then? Uh, I don't know. Parachute didn't come out for some reason. and it... Parachute was out, but I think the fire probably burned some of it off. It sure didn't slow the car down at all. I don't know what happened, really. When the stress of over 250 miles an hour is continually placed on the nitro-burning engines used in top fuel racing, Sometimes, as Joe Amato found out in round number one, something lets go. In Joe's case, this wasn't the first time this weekend. In qualifying, Joe Amato exploded a supercharger, scattering parts over the racetrack. No injuries to Joe Amato, except maybe to his bank account. Joe and Jerry Amato doing a post-mortem on a motor that exploded uh, 100 feet or so before the finish line still ran 5.83. But Joe, this one's pretty well destroyed. Yeah, this looks like a grenade. I don't know. It's made a lot of noise. It sounded expensive. Okay, now uh, the restraint straps on the supercharger have done their job. Certainly one is broken, but uh, that's to be expected. The blower is still on the race car and not out on the racetrack somewhere. Yeah, all the cars, you know, built well. All the safety stuff did its job. You can see the, the rules are definitely a help because it didn't go into the stands, which it definitely would have with the way that broke. That's the first pass on that brand new blower. Apparently, the it made the car a lot more powerful than it did before, and, and that's the reason why we're standing here looking at a, a dead soldier. While Amato was pulling to a stop on the racetrack, his competition, Lucille Lee, was waiting patiently at the starting line. With Amato out of racing for the day, all Lucille had to do was go straight. A quick wheel stand. Lucille across the center line of the track and disqualification. With both cars out in round number one, Billy Williams gets a big break, a by run in the second round. What caused it to cross the center line, was it? We had it. We had a whole lot of horsepower when we left. It, the it, front wheels came up immediately. It's, it's the highest it's ever been, and um, when it came down, it came down crooked. You know, I, I'm trying to think back, and I, I feel responsible as a driver for not keeping it straight. Up, mainly because I feel bad for Mark. Lucille Lee, referring to car owner Mark Danicus. The talk of qualifying, Gary Beck. A new national elapsed time record of 5.54 seconds. But qualifying is one thing, side-by-side -side racing another. In round one, Beck raced Jack Ostrander of Pontiac, Michigan, and proved that the qualifying time was only a mark to be improved. The quickest elapsed time ever recorded in top fuel, 5.48 seconds to cover a quarter of a mile from a standing start. Well, Gary Beck arrives down here to an ovation from the officials in this area. The quickest elapsed time in the history of drag racing, 5.48. Great, great, that's a, it was pretty strong, really. When we talked earlier today, you said you were gonna go out there, you're not even gonna try to run 50, you lied. <laughs> well, we know the thing is, been real car's been real strong the last three weeks, and I'm real glad for Larry Miner to have a great running car like this. Another car owner, Paul Candies, is very happy to have a talented young driver. Mark Oswald proved his worth against Jim Bernard when he too had a giant wheel stand. But Oswald kept the power on and drove through it to victory, completing the pairings for the second round. Oswald will race Shirley Muldowney, Gary Beck against Doug Kerhoulis, and Connie Kalita will meet Dick LaHaye. <laughs> 